r slash ask reddit by planet reddit redditors who have cheated death by missing a flight calling in sick missing the bus etc what happened and did it change your perspective on life i stayed in my car to listen to the end of the news on the radio after parking up as i turned off the ignition someone speeding lost control of their car and skidded straight into the back of mine driving it four meters forward and through the cars in front tore the back of mine and wrote off two other cars as well i got a bit of whiplash and was rather dazed for a couple of days the other driver was banned and charged with a string of driving offenses if i hadn't stopped to listen to the radio i'd have been halfway out of the car instead of restrained inside it and the other driver would have had manslaughter added to the charges so do you always listen to the radio now no off street parking but bad radio where I'm working now. I didn't miss anything or call in sick per se. But I was due to have a back operation for scoliosis and on the morning of the update. The doctor came to my bedside and said he'd had a dream, or a gut feeling, that he shouldn't operate on both curves of my spine and only do the top one. The worst one. I just agreed to whatever he thought would be best. I mean. I could always go back for another op if need be. And thank duck he had that feeling because I literally bled out on the table. As quick as they were pumping blood into me. I was chucking it back out. The op should have lasted 3-4 hours. But mine lasted 8. Nearly 9 hours because I wouldn't stop bleeding. He said if he had opened my hole back up I would have most likely died. I would just like to thank anyone who donates blood. Your unsung heroes. And thank you to doctors and nurses who do everything they can to help save people. You're brilliant. Cristiano Ronaldo doesn't have any tattoos because he wouldn't be able to donate blood for a while. That's how often he reportedly donates. That's cool because 1. He's saving lives. And 2. Because somebody has Ronaldo blood in them and they don't even know. I was 15 and went with my mom to the bank. She asked if I was staying in the car to wait or go inside with her. I stayed in the car for maybe 3 minutes. Then turned off the ignition and went inside the bank. Just cause I was bored. Not even 5 minutes pass and a man runs in and says a truck smashed into a 2003 Ford Windstar. The passenger side was crushed. If I hadn't gotten bored and went inside I would be dead. He must have really been into vans to know it's a 2003 model. I was leaving the mall after buying some clothes for a wedding I was attending and began to walk to my car. As I was getting into my car I realized I didn't buy a tie and had to go back in. I got out of my car and a small pickup truck slams into the back of my car and pushed it into the center of the parking lot aisle. The entirety of the back of my little Ford Focus was completely crushed and the guy inside died. Turns out he was drunk and was coming from the bar across the street to go into the mall for the food court and hit my car. Thank god for your fashion sense. You might say he wouldn't be caught dead without a tie. I was recently in Lima waiting in line to go on a bus tour to San Cristobal when my dad decided that we didn't want to go there and instead went on the tour to Miraflores which is a richer part of Lima. That bus ended up falling down the hill killing at least 8 and injuring a lot. After that we went back home and thought about how our vacation could have ended drastically different. I had no clue what happened during the tour until the family in front kept getting calls and I heard them say that they were fine. Later the tour guide told us about the accident. I was in a terrible car wreck on a family road trip when I was 9 years old. Ejected out the passenger window while it flipped over 3 times. All I suffered was a head laceration and minor concussion. My sister and mother were fine, they were wearing their seat belts. I was not wearing mine. Here's the clincher, if I had been wearing my seatbelt I'd be dead because where I was sitting. The back passenger's seat was completely crushed. Only moments before the accident I took my seatbelt off so I could reach in the front seat where my backpack was so I could grab a Calvin and Hobbes book. My perspective hasn't changed much. The rare story where not wearing your seatbelt saves your life. I was relieved to read the part of your family being okay too. I did not want to see that you had somehow survived and your family died. That's a twofold blessing right there man. I have a cousin who also got thrown out of a car in an accident. He and his girlfriend weren't wearing their seatbelts and something ran out into the road. She swerved to miss it and ended up rolling the truck. Five times. 
He got thrown about 100 feet. She got thrashed by the steering wheel before being thrown 50 feet. They were both dead on impact. There was an army convoy right behind them with medics on board. The only reason they survived was they had medical assistance to resuscitate in less than 60 seconds. They were in the hospital for months recovering. I was supposed to speak at a conference at the World Trade Center on 9 stroke 11. My late husband has family and friends who live in NY and NJ. They were going to meet us at the WTC plaza so we could do the tourist thing after I finished my presentation. But. At the last minute. The conference organizers had a cancellation at an event in Houston and asked me to fill in there instead. I will never forget the relief in my mother-in-law's voice when she called to make sure that we didn't make the trip to Nick or how that relief turned to fear and then to anger as other family members started reporting in. The cousin who was supposed to be out tour guide that day worked in the towers and he didn't make it out. It's hard to be relieved that you escaped a horrific death when you're grieving for someone who didn't. One of my dad's college classmates worked in the WTC. But happened to oversleep his alarm that day. He woke up. Decided he was just going to take the day off anyways. Then turned on the TV to see the towers in flames. Can't imagine what was going through his mind. Really one casual well I will just call in sick to holy duck I almost died going to work. Double quote. I was young at my brother's baseball practice at an elementary school after hours. I was around 6. My 11 year old sister takes me inside to use the bathroom. It's dark we can't find our way out. The only light comes from the principal's office. We decide to ask her and walk towards the door feeling eerie. Just as we approach the handle my mom appears at the end of the hall asking why we're taking so long. We leave and go home. Here on the news that night the principal shot herself in the office at the same time we were in the school either before or after. Edit. I was half asleep when I wrote this and thought no one would see it. Yes principal. It was actually in Georgia. I heard she was stressed about her test scores. I don't think I cheated death in this moment but I do believe it would have scarred my sister and I. Or we could have miraculously saved her. What stuck with us is how eerie we both remember feeling. We were lost for about 20 minutes trying to find the right door to lead back to the ball field. We were scared to ask the principal for fear that she'd be upset we were in the school. And I kept insisting. It was such weird timing that we never made it inside. Very very sad story and for the kids around the town. I thought I clicked on the what's the most embarrassing thing you saw someone do when they thought no one was looking? Thread. So this was quite the wild ride for me. I hope nobody saw me kill myself. I was at a mall once with my brother and mother and we were on vacation so we were walking all day. My mom wanted to go to this one store to go Christmas shopping for my other brother but my brother that was with us was tired and wanted to get supper. My mom kept arguing with my brother that she would have only been a couple mins. But since my brother that was with us is a complainer. We decided to go for supper. We came back from supper that evening and learning that they had been a shooting in that mall like 5 minutes after we left and it was right in front of the store we were going to go to. A couple of people died and me. My mom and my brother were terrified the rest of the night. Went back to the hotel for the night and watched the news. And didn't go to that mall the rest of our trip. We would have been right there in the middle of the shooting had we actually went to that last store my mom wanted to go to. So it's a good thing my brother complained about going for supper. And he learned that day that complaining saved lives so he did it even more. Some say he's still complaining to this day. I was about to go down on this girl but then I realized I was gay. Turned out that her vagina eats people. Weird shit. You would probably be fine. One second would have made all difference there. So if he had remembered his wallet. The cab driver and passenger would be alive today. I'm sure that makes him feel better semicolon. Not me but my mom demanded that someone come in on the 11th of September for an interview for a job rather than fly out on vacation because the job had to be filled asap. Anyway the plane he was supposed to be on wound up hitting one of the twin towers. He was forever grateful to my mother being bossy. He also got the job. I mean. At that point. You kind of have to give the guy the job. Mentioned this in a similar post. I skipped class one morning and avoided a shooting at my school. What changed with regards to my perspective on life? 
I get anxious in large crowds. Always check for exits where I go. Have panic attacks when a group of people suddenly change direction. I'm sorry for your continued anxiety. That's a lot to live with. I wish you the best. When I was in my teens. Our family always used to go to the same place for groceries. Always the same day of the week. Always the same time when our parents got home. Always passing through the same spot of the parking hall when we were done. Then we got a dog. The day we usually went shopping he had a vet appointment. So we postponed groceries. That day. Right around the time we would have been passing through that usual spot to get to our car. Someone detonated a bomb. Killing and wounding several people. I knew what would have happened to us without our dog who managed to save us simply by existing. I started crying. Thinking how close it was. Later I've been thinking how many lives it affects when something like that happens. One second in one spot. And the lives of countless family members. Friends. Co-workers and acquaintances will never be quite the same again. And it's not only the death. Many survivors were injured permanently and suffered for years because of it. Maybe even today. It could happen anywhere. And it will. Again and again. One day I may not cheat death again and it will be my family that is affected. See that's the final destination shit I was waiting to hear. The pure coincidence of a trivial change in plans and just like that your life is saved. I'm not aware of it ever happening to me. But I bet the odds of it happening to most people in their lifetime are high. We just aren't aware. Glad you're still with us. Fido deserves a bone. It definitely happens to everyone but we won't ever notice. Like think about this. There could be a single second every day. Where you would be dead at the end of the day if you chose to leave your house. Work or whatever in this exact second. Let's for example say this deadly second tomorrow is 7 hours, 49 minutes, and 58 seconds am. If you leave your house at 7 hours, 53 minutes, and 13 seconds everything will be fine and as usual. But if you leave your house at 7 hours, 49 minutes, and 58 seconds you will get into a car crash with someone, out of certain decision making, and die. I hope you understood what I was trying to say, not a native speaker. It's a really scary thought and I wonder how many seconds there are every day where the outcome would be that I died. My phone vibrated in my cup holder, just a junk email from yours, while waiting at a red light. In the two seconds it took me to look at my phone. The light turned green and a dump truck blew through their red light doing at least 100 kmph. I was dealing with a lot of depression at the time and was slightly upset that it missed me. But now. Looking back on it. I feel like there is something important out there for me and I have another chance to find it. Whatever it may be. I'm glad you're still here. Keep fighting man. Depression sucks. Go kick its ass. Same thing here. Didn't go when a light was green because I turned to admire my girlfriend in the passenger seat at the time. In that time. A big boat of a car barreled though the red and would have t-boned me. Not me but my dad works for a pretty well known jet company as a flight test engineer. One weekend he was supposed to be working overtime but he called out to go to a wedding. That weekend. The jet he would have been test flying had a bad takeoff and crashed killing everyone on it. Needless to say. He no longer works in test flights. A lot of people don't fully appreciate the beyond extreme levels of testing and engineering that go into making aircraft safe. And that's a good thing. Fatal crashes on US base carriers, that's important. Because US base carriers have extreme regulations and oversight, are almost unheard of these days. The last crash with fatalities was Calm Air 5191, warning. Graphic audio, back in 2006 which was ultimately determined to be pilot error. Compare that to the 1970s. Where fatalities were common and major crashes occurred several times each year. For anyone curious. Here's a fun clip of what test pilots deal with on new aircraft. It should go without saying that this is not ordinary flight configuration. But the aircraft exceeded its published limits, which are always below engineered limits, and performed admirably. Last minute. Guy took my place on a patrol about to leave. I had been up for 3 straight days and was grateful. Fast forward 8 minutes later. The patrol was hit by a VBIED car bomb. 
I'm not religious. But I prayed to whatever force that might listen for the rest of the guys to be okay. And I did that all the way until our plane touched down on American soil. Very similar thing. I was volunteered to go inspect cars coming onto the base for a day in Kandahar, for the bazaar. At the beginning of the week the intel guy told us that there was likely a car bomb and to let the dog do all the pre-searching before we were supposed to go check them out. One day I woke up sick with a big rain and couldn't see. So I got put on a different duty instead of car searching. The VBIED they were looking for got found and 4 people died. Absolutely insane. I missed death that day for sure. Voluntold. Where has this word been all my life? Thanks for watching. Subscribe for 3 videos a day.